Hi everyone, welcome to this Path to CTO podcast. Today we are with Os Alvarez, uh, the host of Coffee Power podcast and also the head of engineering and digital capabilities at Scotia Bank. Os, welcome to this new episode of Path to CTO. Thank you, my man. Thank you so much for having me. So second time we have an interview. I was in his podcast, Coffee Power, talking about the, the, the topics that are most important to become a CTO. Yes. So second time, now we are exchanging the roles. I'm the host now. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, today um, we will be discussing one of the key topics for building a great team, which is delivering the right culture and building that right culture from the ground up if it's, your, if it's the case, or if not, developing the one that is existing now to become a high-performing team, to become a team that is motivated and passionate about what they are doing. Yeah, that's the topic today. And I think the very basic question that we can start with is what is the culture? Yeah, man. So um, it's a really interesting topic because, you know, the thing is when you define what is a culture um, you will notice that it's something that exists. It's something that people breathe. It's something that people live. But it's something, something at the same time that you want to, you know, create and pursue that in a in an organic way. So you don't want to push a culture because when you push a culture, people can be agree or not. So if you find a way that people can have some principles, way of work, and you have a leader that can motivate people to follow that kind of mindset and principle that you have in the company that's when you are starting creating a culture, right? So, uh, but the problem is not just because you create a PowerPoint and you say, okay, my principles and my culture are all these four bullet points. Uh, and because you create a PowerPoint, you feel that people is going to have that culture. That is not a culture. It's a hard process, man. So when you are asking me that question, sometimes what I believe if if, if you can find a rule, if you can find a different process to set a culture and it's a magic way to achieve that, everybody will have a really good culture in their companies. And that's not the, the, the situation right now. So when you have a proper engineering culture or a good culture in, in a company, it's because they find their own way to set those principles, to leave those principles. And, and they create that culture for the company, but, but it's really hard. And there is no just one way to define a culture. So depending of the company, the, of each one of the companies, the complexity of, uh, of each one of the companies is when you can decide what you can take and the people that can follow that culture. Great. So and why do you think you need an engineering culture in your team? Oh man, think about this. Um, in some companies, it's the main reason why people don't leave that company. You will think, so probably people will leave a company because they are having good salaries or, or, or what? The, the, one of the main reasons why people want to work in a company is because they like that company. They like the culture of that company. They want to be part of that culture. So when you set a proper engineering culture, when 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 you improve and you set uh, 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 some principles and, and rules and some operating model in how you can have a health healthy engineering culture is one of the main reasons why people want to work in your company and want to steal in your company. So um, you have all the advantages if you have a, a this uh, set in a proper way to 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 become that in a HR problem process when people can want to be with you because of that. That's really true. And as founders, uh, they need to breathe that culture from the very beginning. They need to create that culture by example. Um, and the thing is that it's very difficult later on to make it propagate when the company is start uh, is starting to grow. It's very yeah. difficult to keep that culture, to make everyone breathe the culture and the values as the founder or the or the first uh, hires, right? So how do you keep that? 
Yeah, uh, and you say something really important, right? So um, how do you can create that umbrella when you can push the culture in a way from the founder, from the top to bottom, right? And and that's true, in my opinion. Some people say that culture is something that organically comes, but in my opinion, for example, when you have a leader, imagine this, you have a leader, and that's, that leader is jailing and, and to people all the time, is having like a high intonation in voice, or that people say something bad words or that people is, 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 you know, having bad behavior, what's going to happen when you have your leader doing that? The message that you are telling to your people is, it's okay to do this. So if my leader do this, why don't I can do the same? So the, in my opinion, the best ambassadors for implementing a healthy culture are all the leaders. The leaders are the example. They have to help to shape. They are the early adopters of the culture that you want to shape. You are the person that you can help to everybody to say, this is good. We allow this. This is not good. We don't allow this. So in my opinion, the, the top bottom strategy is really important to, you know, to shape a proper engineering culture in your teams. Totally agree. Totally agree. And the thing here, What I think is that um, actions speaks much louder than words. So oh, it's yeah, much, impor much more important to have that part shown every single day. The attitude you want to have in your team, you need to deliver. Otherwise, the, the words in the, in the wall when you are entering the office, um, the values in a, in a cultural playbook that you deliver to the employees at the beginning matters nothing, nothing at all. Yeah, yeah. 100%. So, Um, one other topic is you need to, um, align that culture with the behavior. How can you do that? I think what I say before, uh, is really important that, you know, leaders should, should drive that behavior. They should be the example and, and, and having a culture is a process is, is a consistent process that throughout the time you will find and you you the, the people at the company start absorbing those kind of principles and behaviors and start you know uh, uh, feeling and behaving in that way so that's when you say okay we have a culture and people live and breathe that culture here in this company so um i don't have a way to to you know tell you uh, or everybody that is watching listening to this podcast Do this and you're going to have a good behavior in your culture. You need to figure it out and you need to set different kind of experiments in order to achieve that. But for example, let's say that you, you want to have a culture in, in your company that is safe, uh, is a safe space to talk. So the first thing that you have to do is every time that you have a conversation, you have a meeting right now with people, you need to see if people are talking or people are just listening. So if you want to motivate uh, that people talks, you have to encourage that because if people are is not talking, you don't have that culture in a proper way. You are not changing that behavior in people. Uh, if you want to set a proper engineering testing culture, for example, or, or TDD, test driven development, which is part of the engineering culture. So you have to set the goals. If you are, uh, you want to have 90% of test coverage in your software. So you have to tie that to the build engine. And every time that some people is building a software, if you don't pass that, the build is broken. You cannot deliver that software, so it's mandatory. So you, uh, fortunately, as a tech people, we can do these kind of things, right, in order to force the culture. But it's different uh, in that way when you, uh, in, for example, when you have to work in, in soft skills and personal mindset uh, asset in your company, you have to influence the culture. And, and probably you need to be very rigid and uh, in terms of if you are having people that is not having the same cultural fit that you expect, probably you need to make changes. You need to start bringing people that follow, trust, and believe in the set of principle and the culture that you want to pursue in your company, because then you need 
them to feel that way to motivate their people and you need to do the same with the rest of the people until you find a whole accountability and whole adoption in in your culture and in, in in all the members in your company yeah thank you for the great examples at the end it's all about hiding slow so you make sure that the cultural fit is coming pre uh, preset in that person so you don't need to force the culture in that person the this person is going to adapt really well and fire fast if you see that yep. there is not this kind of fit it's better to let it go before it's uh making the the relationship toxic with other team members and they are starting oh, to, yeah. to be out of out of the out of the cultural fit so yeah yep. um and in this point what do you think about tying the behaviors in the performance review so not only considering the goals in terms of results but also relating the the performance review and the bonus or or the the promotion etc to directly the behaviors expected so for example if your values are about team playing putting concrete goals about helping the team or helping onboarding the new bodies or uh, promoting a healthy a healthy relationship between your office and the other offices around the world yeah. what do you think so um To be honest, I have an issue with the performance review and the goal settings and, and, and because, you know, you can put different kind of goals and if you don't put the goals in a proper way, the goals are going to tell you whatever you want the goals to tell you. So, for example, when you are creating a proper OKRs, when you have the goals and you have the key results and, and that OKR is measurable and you have the KPI uh, and you have a target and then you have to hit that target. I think in, in these quantitative things, it's easier to see, okay, we achieved the goal, yes or no. It's something binary, right? So we hit the number, yes or no. So it's easy. But when you are talking about behavior, Right. So you want to be, uh, um, I don't know, you, you, you want to interconnect different offices and you want them to have more communication with this office. For example, that's a goal. How you're going to measure that? And it's really hard. So you're going to tell me, for example, okay, uh, this could be something about perception. Right. So we can do a couple of survey surveys and in, in both offices and, and people is going to tell their opinion. And that survey, the result of that survey survey is going to be the polls that you are going to take it. And, 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 and that is going to measure if you achieve your goal. Yes or no. However, sometimes the surveys are telling you something completely different that you want to half for that reason <clears throat> the culture is hard to measure if you need a proper culture is something that people needs to start breathing it's like at the air you cannot measure the air you cannot measure the love you cannot measure uh, transparency you can measure this kind of, of set of principles that you want in your company And, and, and usually when that happened is not a performance review or a goal settings that you put in your team, in your company It's a cultural, it's a cultural change. And the best way to measure that is to bring people that believe in that or finding a way if you trust in your people and the people believe on that. And one of the other thing in order to have a proper co engineering culture, the book should be open all the time because there is not a good engineering culture. The book should be a life breathing document that you can evolve, adapt, add more things, changing more things. When I mean the book is what you want to achieve. Then the, the problem is how do you want to achieve those principles and, and, and set of behavior that you want to shape in your company. So, um, I think it's really complex to, to having a goal and measure that. However, you can start for something really uh, um, um, quantitative that can help you to drive this kind of conversation. Uh, and you can use this kind of survey in order to measure. But, but I think that the, the, 
the spiritual and the communication values and the ethic and the principle, which is something that you cannot measure. And you need to start finding a way to create in the, the set of, you know, those people that are going to be the evangelists and uh, finding the right adoption to your teams uh, in order to, to, to shade that behavior in people. Yeah. From my side, I have seen it working really well. So in this case, I, I have to disagree with you. And I think it's, it's the magic of these kind of conversations, not just agreeing on everything. And for me, it has worked really well because I think the people, um, when, they see, when they see and they perceive that the company is taking behavior and, and, and uh, uh, cultural uh, promotion as important as the results itself, they understand that the company take it seriously. And when they see that you can, for example, set your own goals for, for a certain uh, objective, for example, ownership, right? Um, it's something abstract. I'm, I'm totally agree with you here. Uh, it's something that is much more difficult to measure, but you can still highlight all those actions where that person is developing ownership, is, is demonstrating ownership. For example, going the extra mile in a topic or helping uh, another person or talking with a, with a client um, when they are maybe in tech just because they are knocking the door or they are calling at the phone and they are taking the phone and thinking of the customer that's ownership, right? So at the end, it's much more difficult to measure, but at least if they are in this performance review and, and you take time during that review to evaluate how the person has been practicing a, any, any single of the, of the values, for me, it has worked so far really well, has, uh, has been important. And that's why I wanted to ask the question because it's something that is not working all the time and, and, and it's, it's great to have uh, different opinions here. Yeah. yeah. So, so thank you. Thank you for, for uh, clarifying why you think that can work, that cannot work, and, and, and why, uh, why it's important to understand that this is a, an abstract concept that is much more difficult to put into a, an yeah. OKRs or, or a performance review. You know, something that I usually try to avoid is subjective conversations with my team. When you have the performance review at the end of the year and, and you have a goal like, uh, okay, you have to be the best human being ever. Mm -hmm. And then I have to measure that. I mean, and I have to tell you, I don't believe that you're the best human ever or you are. It's a subjective conversation, subjective conversation. So the people can tell you, but I do believe that I am the best person because I have this, this, this. And I can tell them, but I don't believe because you have this, this, this. So it's a hard conversation that, of course, you can all the time give your feedback. But uh, being part of an evaluation, in my case, uh, I struggle with this. And, and I haven't found the best way how to shape behavior in a performance review. Uh, for that reason, I take more the cultural, uh, you know, uh, uh, mindset and and, 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 and and let's say putting in the air, you know, in order instead of, you know, forcing that, may the people breathe that and, and shape that culture with time, of course. Yeah. Now that we are talking about the, the performance review, we have been talking about um, culture and the other side, the goals. Uh, let's go for that part. What do you think are the main goals for an engineering team, no matter the industry or, or the current situation? So the thing is, uh, I do believe that uh, any engineering team in any company has mainly two goals. The first one is ship value constantly, deliver value frequently. So that's a goal. How are you going to measure? Uh, uh, and that's a different conversation. So uh, in, in I will say in all the agile engineering team. So you have to provide value to your business in a constant way. And the second goal is maintain the quality of your, of your software. It's not improving your quality because the quality has a, you know, a top, you, you cannot go more than 100% because <laughs> it's impossible, but you want to maintain the quality of your software. So having said that, based on those two goals, then you can have a bunch of different goals depending of each one of the community of practices. For example, when you're, ha when you're having the conversation with the DevOps, they have a different goals, but at the same time, those goals are supporting to ship software frequently 
that is delivering value continuously. Uh, when you're having a conversation with the development team is, for example, they need to be able to hit their ex uh, estimations. So every sprint, the, 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 the capacity su should be really close to the, their velocity. So you're measuring the sprint fulfillment. So in that way, uh, uh, you are having giving value more of, the, more of the time. But for example, if you have a front-end development, so you want to measure, for example, the Lighthouse uh, KPIs, and you, you want to have the SEO, the best practices, the performance with web application in a certain score. And in that way, you are contributing to maintain the quality of your software, which is the main goal. So um, I will say that that's the, the two main goals that I would love to, to, to have in my teams and understanding each one of their expertise and going to let's say lower goals that is supporting higher goals and of course you need to set the proper okrs or kpi kpis that are going to measure if you are hitting those goals or not and that's the easy part right because we we in the engineering teams we have this um um let's say binary measurement, but then you have the, the people measurement, right? So employee engagement, uh, which is more like a for leaders. So you want to, you want to keep your team engaged. You want to, you know, set a proper culture. You need to have agility in your teams. You, uh, you need to measure all, all the things that are hard to measure, transparency, everything that we were talking before. So, um, that's complex, but it's something that you need to set as goal, not probably not for your developers, but mostly for all the people managers and people with the power of influencing more people in, uh, within your organization. Great. And then you put on top the business goals that are uh, for that year, for that quarter. Yeah, that, that's not engineering goals. That's more like a, the business goal that I think everybody should have, right? So depending of 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 what what kind of what what kind of project are you working in, right? So if you have a team working, let's say for retail or for the business, so you need to have your the, the business goals in your team, even into the, the your developers. But for example, when you have a platform engineering team or a capabilities engineering team, which is my case, your stakeholders are the development teams, developers. So yeah. it's not business people. So uh, uh, you are creating agnostic solution and capabilities for your customer. So I'm not responsible if somebody do does something with my capability bad in terms of the business. So I'm not responsible for that. I'm responsible to provide you the capabilities, to have the capabilities running uptime, working properly, uh, uh, giving you the features in the moment that you need. And, and that's my goal. So yes, depending on which kind of team are you, are you measuring in that? Yeah. So you have mentioned agile and continuous de um, delivery of value as, as one of the main goals for your teams, uh, in this case, engineering teams. Why do you think having Agile as one of the two main goals is important? <laughs> That's a good question. I have to tell you that probably I'm not the best guy to talk about Agile because I have my issues with Agile. Um, when I say I have my issues is because I'm a true believer that Agile is a vehicle in how you are going to create software. Agile is not the goal. The goal is not to do agile. In fact, agile is an adjective. It's like a, say something like a green. It's the no. way of doing it. Yeah. This is green. This remote control is green. Agile is an adjective. So we are doing software in an agile way. We are creating this product with the agile mindset. So it's the way, it's the how you are going to find that way. So. I think it's really important because one of the main goals of my engineering teams all the time is give value frequently. And when you say frequently, of course, uh, people say that Agile is working in the sprints and delivers something every two weeks. But Agile is the best vehicle to shape behavior into your teams. For example, let's say that you have a Scrum team and one member of the team is having an issue, an X issue. It's not giving, it's a bad performance. It's not having good results. It's, it's, you know, it's, not, uh, uh, com uh, it's not 
uh, hitting the, their goals, it's not hitting his estimation, it's affecting the performance of the team. So in a traditional company, what happened? When you see something like that, so you escalate the situation with the boss. So the boss is, is watching that and the boss should be, you know, taking a decision, having the performance review, the one ones and shape that behavior. Uh, if you, you know, one strike, two strike, three strike, strike out. In an agile world, the team is the first step. If something bad is happening there, the same team is there responsible to find a solution, not the boss, not the leader. It's the same team. The same team is having these ceremonies of retrospective, which is a safe place when the leader, we shouldn't go there. We should not. We should be outside of this kind of ceremony. It's a transparent ceremony when, when, when you put all the things that you believe that is working, is not working. And then you have some compromise that the, the agile team, let's say scrum master, agile coaches, agile lead, whatever is helping you to monitoring and, and having a progression in those kind of behavior is if one person of the team is having some issue when, when the same team is not capable to fix that situation with one member of the team, the same team, when I mean the team is development team, product owner, designers, agile people, different community of practice, analytics, escalate the situation with the people manager. And then it's when the people manager can act and react. So that's the beauty of, of agile. And that's part of your culture. So uh, uh, you, you, you want to empower your teams. You want to give the tools in your team and you need to trust that your team can solve, fix all the situation in terms of the product and in terms of the, of the, of the situation with people. However, sometimes you have to, when the team is not mature enough, you have to be there until you find the way that the team can go alone and, 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 and you provide support basically. Great. Yeah. No, I totally agree. At the end, um, Agile took the software world by storm. Um, and it's something that we repeat over time, over time. And now even founders, other departments trying to work the Agile way, trying to adopt the Agile mindset, trying to yeah. start with the practices at the, and at the end, uh, you can see this onion model, the, 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 the most important and most impactful part of the, of agile is the mindset It's not the practices. You can do the practices the culture, without yeah. the mindset and it will not work. So in, 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 in fact, when I say that I have an issue for, with agile is because I have been, I have worked with people that want to deviate the focus on the of the team of doing software for doing agile for doing a proper agile and that's not the goal the goal is not to do a good ceremony so or having a really good retrospective or of a beautiful planning or a beautiful refinement or a really good backlog the goal is to deliver the software so of course you need to work on that but it's not your main goal is the is the way that you are going to achieve that goal and and but at the same time, I have worked with a really good people that understanding that goal, use the agile in the best way to shape the behavior. Agile is not a scrum. A scrum is just a framework. Agile is a mindset. It's part of the culture. A scrum is just a framework. It's like a, you can use a framework. You can use methodologies. You can use even a scrum of a scrum or escalated a scrum. Or when you have multiple teams that create dependency, you can, you can have these kind of things. But the agile is those kind of rules that you define and the principle that you define in, in, in your teams. Scrum is easy, man. It's, it's the, the paper is what? Like a 12 pages that you can read and you can learn a scrum. So you can be an expert in a scrum right away. But having the experience to work with the team and working with the people and working with the human's emotion and human's behavior, that's the interest part of Agile. And, and no old Scrum Master are specialists on this kind of thing. So good Scrum Master, good Agile coaches understand that. They, they follow in my the opinion, principle. in my yeah, opinion, no, no, no. It's, uh, it, it's the same. I, I think both of you have worked with different uh, scrum teams and the scrum masters or agile, or agile coaches. And some of them just follow the rules, just the, the, yeah. the, the meetings and, and being there and, and doing some uh, nice, nice uh, games in order to uh, make the retrospectives fun and getting everyone to explain. And there are others that are focused on the principles of agile and 
yeah. tying that principles to the business, which is at the end, deliver frequently, having this autonomy into the team to empower yeah. uh, their own decisions, making decisions without anyone uh, telling them what to do. Th these are the great Scrum Masters that I have, I have made over yeah. time. And they are delivering this shift in the mindset. It's not just shift in the procedures, on the processes. It's the shift in the mindset. So everyone is becoming empowered. Is uh, speaking out loud in the meetings. They are all participating. You have diverse, uh, diversity of opinions. They respect each other. They help each other to achieve a common goal. Yeah. So uh, th they try to improve and they care personally about the others. And when they say, for example, that low performer, they say in order for him or her to improve and then improving the whole team, not as a personal critic. So that's what a great scrum master or, or agile coach can yeah. enable in a team. This is my experience at, 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 uh, uh, at least uh, related to agile, which is... Yeah. So Alvaro, I, I record an episode in my podcast, Coffee Power. Uh, I'm sorry, guys, it's in Spanish, but if you speak Spanish, you can jump and, and watch that episode. And the, the episode is... Is the agile that? Does the agile that? So is that? And I brought a, a really good ag agile and scrum master uh, guy that, that 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 I have the opportunity to work with, and it was a really good episode. So if you want to check it out, so go there as well and 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 check that, and and you will you will hear from his opinion all the problems that the, the agile people have right now at this moment in 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 the ecosystem. Great, great uh, add-on to continue this conversation. So uh, <laughs> uh, you will you will be able to find the link uh, in the description later on. So um, I have another question, which is a bit more like practical for people that needs to work on the culture when this engineering culture can fail. So let's go for real tips or real yeah. cases so they can identify on time and they can avoid it. So you fail? if your leaders are not the best ambassador of the culture, it's going to fail. If you see your leaders doing something different that they say and that they put in the, that PowerPoint, it's going to fail. People is not going to believe, people is not going to breathe the culture, people is not going to, to influence other people to have that culture when you have the leaders doing something different. Um, I think that's uh, one of the principles, the, the, the first reason, I will say the second reason is when you don't take the time to, to shape that, that's not something that is going to happen suddenly, eventually. So it takes time. You need time. You need to be consistent and you need to wait until people is having the same principles. It's going to fail when you allow people to do something different than the culture that you want to have. When people is doing something completely opposite and contradictory of when the principles of the, your culture is, and you allow that, the culture is going to fail because the message that you are telling the, to the team is, it's okay to, to, to do in something different. It's okay to, to have in this behavior. I'm going to, you know, allow people to do this kind of behavior. So you have to be strict in these kind of things that you are not a lot, uh, willing to, to negotiate with people, be, people's behavior, people's behavior. So I will say those are, uh, the, one of the main reasons, in my opinion, why uh, a proper engineering culture is failing. And, and, And I will say as well that uh, I don't know if that's why fail or what is having success because it's, the success is completely the opposite of what I'm saying is you need expert. You need people with experience in, in shaping culture, agile people, scrum master, agile coaches are really good helping you with this. People from HR that understand, understand uh, uh, people's behavior, people's feeling, a little bit of psychology, uh, those people help you to define this kind of uh, behavior. And at the same time, um, I would say sometimes companies, when they are very, let's say, vertical, when everybody's like at the boss, because I'm going to do this because my boss, my boss, my boss, my boss, and it's the boss of the boss, and you create this kind of pyramid. Um, It's hard to push things 
down when you have too many levels to go through, right? So um, um, if you have a more horizontal structure or if you have a vertical structure, but you promote to be, you know, keeping the doors open so you can talk with your boss or a any kind of leader, anytime uh, uh, you have your, your Slack, everybody can create a one-on-one -on -one with you and you, you promote that. Um, it's going to help you to, to have that. If you're having leaders that is like, a, oh, I'm the most busy man in the world, so I don't have 20 minutes for anybody. So I, I, sometimes people say, tell me, oh, so you have to be busy. Yeah, man, that's part of my job description. I'm busy all the time, but that's okay. That's the career that I take in my life, and I agree, and, 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 and I'm okay with that. The problem is when I'm not busy. That's a problem. Right. So I'm busy all the time. So, but I, I understand that I need to talk with people. If I only as a leader talk only with my people that report to me only, I just going to have just one opinion. I need to go deep with the team. I need to talk with the team. I need to go lunch. Well, right now I have to tell you, man, with this situation for me has been really hard because for me having the coffee, you know, going for lunch, with one member of my team, or, or let's say Thursdays or Friday, let's go for a beer and let's go to the bar and let's have a different conversation. That creates a, a clue in your team, a clue, a clue that can help you, you know, to, 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 to communicate in a better way, to create that partnership, to, 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 you know, in the moment when you have to agree to disagree or disagree and commit for something is easier when you have this kind of partnership with somebody in your team. And man, to be honest, Zoom and Teams for me, not yet. It's not my best friend. I try to put my camera. I try, you know, to promote different kind of energy, but I, I'm, I, for me, it's hard, man. For, uh, yeah. I have to tell you that it's not the, the, the ideal world for me. But I'm working on that, man. I need to learn to work on that because I think that's going to be for a long time. So hopefully I'm going to go to the office, I don't know, let's say one day a week so you can have those spaces or maybe one day a month you can have those spaces when you can, you know, create that energy. But man, we are social beings. We, we are designed to, to have that social interaction with people, in my opinion, in my opinion. So... I need, to, I need to agree with you. It's also my opinion, even, uh, even if a remote environment is very, very good for flexibility. So uh, it allows you to do your own life in your own times and at your own pace. But you miss that personal touch. And Zoom is not yet there. Teams is not yet there. Google Hangouts means... <laughs> It's, it's not yet there. I, I mean, just uh, one, one hand in the shoulder, may I help you? makes much more for the relationship with that person for the trust between you and that person yeah, man. than 12 hours of personal mentoring or personal uh, catch-ups with uh, with a person in uh, in zoom that's yeah, the reality I mean, we are human beings yeah i, I think remote working is going to be here i don't know if forever but for a long period of time but i mean i think we need those spaces that are going to be a minority, but we need those spaces. We need to see the faces of the people that yeah. we are working with. That create a different energy, man. And, and and I don't know if I'm being old school right now. I'm not too old, but but uh, that's the in my case, that's the way that I can find more kind of partnership. Yeah. No, no, it's it's, it's the same. It's the same for me. So I think even if you are a fully remote team having the budget that you are saving in offices and equipment and a lot of things to have a uh, get together one month, as you say, every one month, every three months, but spending in a beach, that budget, drinking pina colada. <laughs> exactly. Together, together, right? Uh, the relationship will be much better. In Ibiza, yeah. <laughs> you can go to Ibiza uh, and you can enjoy Ibiza with a, yeah, man, why not? No, that's uh, that, that's true. Uh, th this is what I recommend for the teams, and I, this is what what I miss a lot right now for the remote setup. Uh, it's better for a lot of things, but you miss that personal touch, right? Yeah. So now that you have uh, brought some tips about how to deliver that great culture, uh, some do's and don'ts, uh, let's use that that final part of the words of the words of sorry uh, of the podcast 
to deliver some tips to set the proper engineering culture starting from now, something actionable for, for the people that is hearing today? Yes, I think you need to start in why, what, what are the things that you are not going to allow in your teams? If you're a leader, right? If you're a leader and you want to shape an engineering culture in your team, so what are the things that you are not going to accept in your team? So you need to think about this. What is the kind of behavior that you are not going to allow in your team, allow in your team? The second thing, which is the easy part is in focus in the engineering operating model, which is part of the engineering culture, culture, define where are, what are going to be all those KPIs that you want in your team. So based on the goals that you want in your team, how you're going to measure, are you going to measure the sprint fulfillment? Are you going to measure, you know, the code, uh, static code quality uh, coverage or the test automation uh, end to end coverage or unit test coverage, or are you going to measure the frequency of deployment uh, and the cadence of your deployment, the, um, Defining different kind of KPIs that you can have in a proper dashboard, let's say, and you can monitoring the progress and how the team are improving those, let's say, uh, um, um, proper engineering numbers, right? That is helping you to drive a proper engineering operating model. That's the easy part. Um, and yeah, I need to tell you that when you define what you are not uh, willing to, to do, create a plan set a plan um, how do you think that you can start what is the kind of behavior that you want and set a plan with people that can help you to you know put that on the table in every planning in every meeting in every ceremony in every retrospective uh, put people that can help you drive this kind of behavior work with your direct team to to understand if they are the, the the right people to have this kind of mindset and if not how you can uh, uh, listen or convince them that having this kind of behavior is better for them and for the company um and give time give give time because that's not something that is going to happen eventually suddenly so you need to give time to the people on the team to to breathe that air. So you need to put that in the air. So it's not something that, uh, you know, you can force uh, at some point. So it, it's a hard process, but you can see companies like, for example, um, Netflix. I love, for example, that some part of the culture in Netflix that is, okay, so we have autonomous team and we have, we give them the accountability to take mostly the, 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 majority of their decisions and we provide a framework when you know you cannot do something outside of the framework but inside of the framework you can do whatever you want and you can take all the decisions you want so you're autonomous i love that i love something that for example spotify say that um so when you have a dependency between one team and another uh, instead of requesting that feature or creating more dependency each one of their teams are inner source, which is a kind of a internal open source. So when you need a features, instead of requesting the features, you can go to the repo, you can create the feature, you can code the feature, and you send the PR, the pull request. And that centralized team, instead of creating that feature for, for you, is going to provide you the guidelines and it's going to approve that pull request if you follow the guidelines. And you remove the bottleneck, which the bottlenecks and dependencies, which is one of the biggest problem in huge corporate and in technological teams, right? If you want to have team autonomous and you're creating dependencies, you're having a huge problem. So autonomous is like a completely the opposite opposite of dependency. So you have to break dependencies. You have to find a way into your culture that uh, 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 we not with an operating model like inner source, when you can break those kind of, kind of, of bottlenecks into your teams. Great. So agile, removing the dependency with the, uh, with the, with the top, right? With the leader, then uh, these kind of uh, proposals to remove the, the dependencies uh, that are horizontal are across, across teams, right? So every yeah. single piece, uh, every single unit of, uh, of work, this team is totally autonomous to deliver what they need to deliver and they have no 
no no problems to do that. So is when you really, as, as, as Scrum says, is when the team is really blocked and they can work for a period of time, totally focused on their work and they don't need to communicate with the outside because everything they need is inside. The information for the features, they are, they are curated. They, they know what they need to do and they don't depend on anyone else that can have their yeah. own goals or their own dependencies as well. So yeah, that's, yeah. that's great. Great tip. Thank you. Thank you very much. So us, it's time to say goodbye. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time today, uh, in this, uh, path to CTO podcast. Um, just let me know if no, you want man. to say some, some final words from your side. No, man, my, my pleasure anytime. And thank you, everybody that is watching or listening to this episode. So it was a pleasure to, for, uh, to being here with you in this podcast. Second time. Second will, time. Man. Will there be a third time? <laughs> I am sure that it's going to be a third time. Okay, let's move again to your podcast then. <laughs> it's, it's, let's do it. Let's do time. it, man. Anytime. Great. Okay, then uh, once we have this third time, I will make sure that we add it in the description as well. So we keep the, the, ball, the ball moving. See you again in the next okay, uh, Path Thank to you CTO so much. podcast. Bye-bye, us. Bye.